excited to be here. When I learned about this group, I have to say I was so unbelievably impressed and uh, excited that we have a group like this here in our, in our city. So I was delighted to be asked to come. So thank you for inviting me. So I was asked to talk about a couple things. One, a little bit about my journey uh, into politics, and I'll try to embed my experiences with transparency in that process. Uh, but then I want to talk to you a little bit about what I've been working on since I've been at City Hall. So I'm in my 10th month as mayor of this amazing city, and I've been working on a lot of different initiatives, um, but one is around uh, transparency. I'm actually trying to embed transparency into everything that we do, uh, but I'll talk a little bit more about the specifics of that, and then I want to make sure that I have time for questions, because I find that the Q&A parts are often the, the most rich and enjoyable uh, elements of speaking, because I, I would much rather talk about what you want to hear than just tell you what I think you want to hear. So I'll tell you a little bit about my journey into politics, and I'm going to encourage every single one of you to get more engaged in politics at some level. Uh, I'm going to really ask you to step up and to figure out where your heart is and where your passion is, and then to get engaged, because we need more people engaged. We need more young people. We need more women, we need more minorities, but we also need a lot more people who are from the creative and innovative backgrounds. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that. So a little bit about me. I was a city commissioner for 10 years, uh, representing the, the great second ward in our city, which is the northeast end. I see some second warders out there. Uh, so, and then last year I decided to run for mayor, but you know, I'll give you a, a, a thumbnail sketch. 20 years ago, 25 years ago, in fact, a good friend of mine is in the audience who I've known most of my life. Uh, when I was growing up, I never, ever, ever thought I would be in politics, I mean, truly. My um, parents are probably the most apolitical people you would ever meet. In fact, my father uh, was drafted into the Vietnam War and has a very negative perspective about government and has his entire life uh, for a number of good reasons. So I never thought I would get involved in politics, um, but this crazy journey of life takes us down roads that sometimes we can't predict. And uh, I started to get a little bit engaged uh, in high school, actually. I was able to, to shadow uh, State Representative Pat Gagliardi for a day and really saw public service in a different light. And, uh, and then I went away to college, so I left Sault Ste. Marie, went all the way down to Mobile, Alabama. People usually ask me why, and I ask them if they've ever been in the Sioux in the winter. <laughs> and if you have, then you know why I went to Mobile. So I went down to Mobile, uh, spent four years down there, and then moved to Grand Rapids, and uh, started working in the field, so I have a degree in psychology, started working in the field of um, domestic violence. And then I went off and got my master's degree at Michigan State, and it was really through my work in social work that led me to the path of politics. Uh, so I started getting involved in a lot of issues around violence against women and violence against children. Uh, after I got my master's degree, I started working in the field of child welfare. And I worked at the children's hospital and I saw so many cases of children who were horribly um, physically abused, sexually abused. I worked with a lot of families uh, that were struggling in systems that I believed were not helpful. And so, <clears throat> I just started getting involved in the community. I, I got involved in a domestic violence response team. I got involved in a sexual assault action team. I started helping to plan International Women's Day events, uh, really looking at human trafficking because it was an issue even back you know, 15, 16 years ago that people weren't talking about. And I was working with victims who um, had been trafficked. And I couldn't believe the, the depth of this pain in our community that people weren't aware of. And it was through that work that I got to meet a lot of people through a social connection, kind of like this right here. I got to meet a lot of people who cared about a lot of the same things that I cared about. And it was through that group of women, largely women that I met, um, a number of them started to encourage me to run for office. <clears throat> and uh, a, a handful of the women I worked with were singularly focused on getting more women elected to office because when they looked around elected bodies at the time there were very few if any women so this was back in 2004 2005 
And right here in our community, our county commission didn't have any women. Our city commission only had one woman. And they started to, to educate people about, you know, look at the decisions that are being made that impact women, and there's no women around the table. And so it was this group of women who encouraged me to run. And sadly, for women, that is often how women decide to run. They don't grow up thinking about running for mayor or governor or president. It's usually because somebody else encourages them to do so. So you talk to women who are elected, about 70% of them will tell you they never thought about running for office until somebody else encouraged them to do it. And that's even true. I, even serving on, on the city commission, I worked on a lot of projects that I loved, um, but it was Mayor Hartwell who first encouraged me to run for mayor. So when he started thinking about when he was gonna be done serving as mayor, he's the one that started talking to me about, I think you should run for mayor. And I told him what I told the group of women, I'm like, you're crazy, no way. I have, you know, I'm in my 30s, I'm in the, the heart of my career, I'm loving what I do. Um, but he started appointing me to boards and commissions, he started mentoring me, and he started to encourage me to run for mayor, and I'm so glad I did. Um, I'm really, really grateful to be in the position I'm in today uh, to serve this amazing city. In fact, every day I feel so grateful. Uh, so that's a little bit about my journey. There's lots of bumps along the way, but I think that would require a lot more time and probably some beer. And uh, so that will be take two someday. Um, so let's talk about transparency. So transparency, I'll tell you, running for office, running for elected office, you have to be transparent in ways that I think I completely underestimated. I remember when I first ran for office, I had people ask me questions, per, like very personal questions, that I was not prepared to answer. Um, but as a, as a public servant, you have to be open and you have to be willing to have those conversations and answer those questions, even sometimes when it's uncomfortable. Um, and, you know, I've come to recognize that uh, not only do people want to get to know you uh, as their mayor or as their city commissioner, um, but it really helps to create a connection. And, so I've had to get, as an elected official, I've had to get a lot more comfortable talking about my own personal journey and things in my personal life that I probably never thought I would talk about publicly. Um, so there's an element of being transparent that you have to be committed to when you decide to run for office. And uh, I think what you will find is, um, even though it, it's uncomfortable, people really, really appreciate it. And so I, I always try to just remind myself that. <clears throat> So then, since I've, been, um, since I've been serving as mayor, so I started serving in January, and fortunately I had a little bit of time after my election last year, before I started serving in January, to try to start to uh, organize my priorities, figure out what I wanna do, and uh, I have, I've had some people tell me that I have too many goals, but if you know me, uh, that's not true, because I like to have lots of goals, and I'm pretty task-oriented. Uh, and I might not know how I'm going to get there, but I'm really committed to getting there. So I made my list of priorities when I uh, first started thinking about the beginning of my service in January, and I broke them down into different areas. <clears throat> and I believe that transparency is really embedded into all of those areas, because I believe that information is power, that people have to have access to information, good information, in order to get engaged and in order to create change. And what I found at the city is that it's really difficult to get access to good information. And I experienced this as a city commissioner because very often I would go, I did a lot of work in the neighborhoods, and I would go and I would talk to neighbors, and they would be so frustrated because it was the first time they were hearing about something. So communication from the city, and if you all are engaged in the city, you know this is true. I'm seeing you, <laughs> how are you by the way? You're shaking your head because you know this is so true. Um, so the, city's, the city is not very good at communicating. They're not very good at providing information that's easily digestible. And it's really difficult to navigate bureaucracy. I mean, I've been doing it for 10 years, and I, I could give you a whole list of struggles I've had in the last 10 months as I try to navigate city hall and bureaucracy. And so if it's difficult for me, and I'm, I'm living in it, I can't imagine what it's like for residents. And so one of my goals is to increase transparency at every level of government. So the easiest one to start with is our website. So if you have gone to the city website, 
you know that it sucks. It's awful. It is the worst website I have ever seen in my life. I can't even find stuff on the website. It's crazy. So one of the first things is I said, this is unacceptable. Like we have to, we have to be a city that uh, truly has a digital, a digital front door, digital presence. I, I believe that if you have anything you need from the city, you should be able to do it electronically. You should not have to walk into city hall. Um, you should be able to do it from your smartphone. So we embarked earlier this year on a whole beta testing. We worked with five departments that are, are heavily used departments. We went through some testing of what we liked, what we didn't like. And we're in the process right now, actually, of putting out an RFP that will transform our digital footprint in the city. Uh, and to me, my argument for this, uh, both with city staff and my colleagues, is that for people who aren't from Grand Rapids, they go to our website, and that is not a representation of who we are. Uh, and we need to use the website as a way to educate the community and to give them information so that they can be actively engaged on issues that they care about. So the website is a big one. Uh, <clears throat> a couple other things we're doing, so we implemented 311. Uh, we put that, we have an app on that. So if, for residents, if they call in a complaint, so I use this all the time because I noticed lots of things I never thought I would notice before. Do you ever realize that? Like once you get a job, or even if you have a certain car, then you notice all these other cars that are like yours. Well, I notice everything now. I notice sidewalks that are, you know, over an inch, you know, a sidewalk square that's over an inch up. I notice trees that look like they need to be watered. I notice grates that are missing. I, so I'm always taking, I notice graffiti, even if it's just a little tiny piece of graffiti, and I'm always taking pictures of it and submitting it to 311. And then I can track, <clears throat> with 311, I can now track that uh, complaint and see where it is and then see when it's taken care of. So I always encourage residents to use that because it's a great, we invested a lot of money into our 311 system with the hope that it'll be more user friendly. A couple other things I'm working on is that I am, um, in the process right now of uh, drafting and pushing through an ethics policy. Um, so the city of Grand Rapids for elected officials and appointed um, individuals, we don't have an ethics policy, which is just in my mind uh, unheard of. We should, we need to. Um, we also don't have a conflict of interest policy. And I know, I know, I see your, I see your facial responses, I know. That's how I, th I felt too. I'm like, I can't believe we don't have a conflict of interest policy where elected officials have to disclose potential conflicts and be really open and transparent about it. So everywhere, um, all the work that I'm doing that at the city, I feel like transparency is a part of it because I'm constantly asking the question and asking why. Uh, and then I, I'm always asking, how do we do this differently? And that's what I love about being here today is because we need more creative, innovative thinkers engaged in government to help us solve really difficult problems. In fact, I had the, I had the uh, real honor last week, or was it Monday? I don't know, my schedule's really crazy lately. So I, um, <clears throat> but it recently I met with Adam Baker from Switch. And he and I were talking about their decision to come here to Grand Rapids. And he said one of the reasons they decided to come here is because of the strong arts and design community. That technology would not be what it is today if it wasn't for design. And I really believe that too. I believe that there's so much that we can learn from our creative culture, from our creative community. Um, and we don't take advantage of that in our community. And we sure don't take advantage of it as we look at social problems that need to be solved. Uh, and so I've, I've, uh, I'll tell you one more thing and then I'll open it up for questions. Um, so I've been, I've been spending a lot of my time this, this year getting to know other cities, getting to know other mayors, looking at what um, resources are available for new mayors. I really believe that once you decide to do something, you, uh, at least for me, once I decide to do something, I want to I want to do it to the best of my ability, and I want to become an expert in that field. And so my charge this past year is learning from the best of the best throughout the country. So I have gone to cities, I've gone to Mayor's Innovation Project, I've gone to, I just have a whole list of things that I've been doing and meeting with other mayors. So one of the mayors that I have grown to really adore and look to as a mentor is Mayor Fisher out of Louisville. 
And Mayor Fisher, shortly into becoming mayor, he became a Bloomberg city. So he started working with Mayor Bloomberg and the Bloomberg Foundation, and he um, got funding to have an innovation team embedded into his government in Louisville. And all of these incredible things have come out of that. So I'm really excited because tomorrow I am heading to Miami um, for City Lab to meet Mayor Bloomberg and talk about what I can learn from not just what Mayor Bloomberg was able to do while he was mayor, um, but learn from other cities and other mayors about how they're integrating innovation into the work that they're doing as mayor. Um, my hope is that I'll be able to apply for a similar grant and look at bringing some innovation teams into the city of Grand Rapids uh, because there's a lot of difficult issues. I mean, we're looking at issues in our community around affordable housing, around eliminating racial disparities, around changing systems that work for everyone. We're looking at how do we meet our environmental sustainability goals? How do I get people to plant 80,000 more trees throughout our city? How do we get people to use less water and conserve water? You know, how do we prevent stormwater runoff? How do we redevelop our river and make it a connector and not a divider? All of those problems, if we're gonna get to the best solution possible, we need creative people around the table. I'm not that creative. I admit it all the time. But I love working with creative people to help me solve problems. Um, I'm, kind of, I'm pretty creative at solving problems, uh, but it's only because of the amazing people that I'm able to work with and, and walk beside as we solve problems. So I'm gonna encourage all of you to um, find a way to get engaged. I'm also gonna tell you that we have lots of opportunities on boards and commissions. I have over 400 people that serve our city on boards and commissions. We're always looking for great candidates. Um, if you're interested in that, please let me know. If you're interested in running for office, especially if you're a woman, give me a call. I will gladly talk to you about what it takes to campaign and what it takes to win. So with that, I'll answer questions.